Yes, I'm about to go live. Cool. Cool. Thank Yay. you. Yes. And we are now broadcasting. Yay. Hello. Oh, yes. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hola. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Yeah. We hope everybody out there is doing well. Yep. Yes. yes, I'm ready for a listening party. A party, a party. Yeah. And if I had the virtual background, I'd have all types of balloons and confetti. <laughs> we got my office. Yeah. <laughs> That's festive. Yeah. I um, I just like to give people a few minutes. You know, some people uh, have some trouble sort of logging in. I want to give them a start about in about a minute or so, but uh. So let's chat, right, in a minute or so. How's it been going with uh, Time Storm and uh, our new <laughs> way to perform? How Has this been the, I imagine, not the first uh, Zoom presentation we've done? Yes, we've been able to use Zoom in a few different ways. Um, I think this is the first listening party. We've done some, like, workshops and, and other events, but I think this is the first vi virtual listening party. Yeah. So. So we, I'm so, glad it's happening with us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm really looking forward uh, to the to the listening party, um, and I hope that you know, of course, we we get a wonderful audience. And the great thing about you know having these sessions um, virtually is that we can see it at any time, right? So if you missed right. today, if you missed this morning, it's okay, go back into the recordings and you get to see it tonight. You get to see it tomorrow or next week. And it's actually proven to work out really well with the virtual programs here um, because, you know, in person, it's such a difference. In person, you come, you view the program, and if you didn't make it, then I believe that I said it's over. You, know, you, don't, you don't get a second chance. You might get to view some photos or, or videos that people might have posted about the event. Um, but now with the virtual, if you, if you didn't make it, it's okay. Watch it tonight. You know, watch right. them on. It's actually really proven well um, where uh, live we would have maybe 20 participants, but then by the end of the week, we have something like 450 views, you know, so, right. so I'm really right. excited. And, and although, you know, some of us may not be happy about the situation, there is light in everything, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, perfect. So, Good morning. Yay. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome, welcome to everybody who's joining us through Facebook and through Zoom. Um, and a grand welcome, of course, to our guests, right? So for those of us just tuning in, my name is Jesenia Lopez, and I am the director of the New Jersey Hispanic Research and Information Center at the Newark Public Library. Um, it's a really long title. I don't like how long <laughs> it takes to say it. Um, but uh, just so you all know, I, if I say NJHIC for short or HIC, it's all the same thing. It's the Hispanic Research and Information Center. Um, it just rolls off of my tongue easier now that I've been saying it for over 15 years. <laughs> so um, at the NJHIC, of course, we invite everybody to learn more about La Sala Panamericana, where you can find books like... Coco y la guitarra de Miguel. Yeah. I'm going to be reading on November 1st nice. in a joint program with the North Museum. Um, but at the Sala Panamericana, it's a it, we gear our programs and services towards the Spanish dominant community. Um, so I definitely invite everyone to come on um, and learn more about La Sala Panamericana. We also have the Puerto Rican Community Archive, and the archive is basically made up of letters and flyers, photographs, scrapbooks and albums, all collected from the community that it documents, you know. So these are real life, you know, take this out of your closet, donate it to the archive so people can research what our community was about. We also have the Hispanic Reference Collection where you can hear interviews with different Latinos from all over New Jersey and, and more, right? We have so much to offer. We got including recording star past programs. You know, since the shutdown um, in March, we've now opened with limited capacity as of September. Um, but all through March, you know, the library was not asleep. Our doors were shut, but we were definitely open and offering programs virtually. This is our, our new world right now. 
Um, and as I mentioned earlier, it, it turned out, uh, it's turning out to be a, a great asset to people um, all over. We, we have uh, visitors from across the other side of the world for, for some of the ASL classes that we're offering. And definitely um, next week, really exciting. I have, uh, we're gonna be joined with Dolores Huerta, oh, wow. civil rights leader um, oh, on October 22nd. Wow. And we didn't have to pay for her plane ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really, which is really great, and you know, and fantastic music. Because I don't think I would have been able to have her join us during Latino celebration otherwise. Um, but with that, right, I'm gonna share uh, real quickly um, some of our flyers for upcoming programs. Uh, let me see if I can do this without any hiccups. Here we go. So um, tonight, actually, we have our Gente y Cuentos program. Um, this is a program unlike a book club where you need to read a book before you sit down and chat about it. This program, we hear a book, again, we're back to the listening, right? We hear a book read out loud, and then we have a discussion following the book. And it really does make a difference reading a book by yourself and just hearing it read to you, you know, especially from someone who's a great reader, right? Um, it makes a tons of difference. It's a great program. It's been happening since October 3rd, but there is still space. So if anyone wants to join, all they would need to do is register at this here link and then uh, tune in at four o'clock every Saturday um, through November 21st. So that's tonight. I hope to see you all joining me in tonight's Gente y Cuentos program. And then we have, um, as I mentioned, Dolores Cuenta next week, um, an intergenerational conversation with Dolores Sueta, where she is our uh, main show. We also have Dr. Patricia Campos Medina, a labor leader and activist joining us um, as moderating as moderator for the discussion with um, Nedia Morsi and Juan Carlos Tello. So um, please tune in again. This is gonna be Facebook Live as it is now, uh, or if you can register on Zoom, that'd be really great to catch you there as well. So. In addition to upcoming programs, we have, I should have shared that, but um, I invite everybody to check us out at www.npl.org. Um, and there you can find links to all of our past programs as well as upcoming programs. You can also, of course, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NJHRIC. That's, that's it, NJ, at NJHRIC. Um, or you can follow, of course, the North Public Library, and the North Public Library has a YouTube uh, page where we posted all of our past programs. So on behalf of the HRC and the library, we're definitely honored to host this listening party and happy to, to be hosting this with Coco Tasso Media, which, by the way, I love the name of <laughs> Coco Tasso Media. Um, so some of you who don't know, we've welcomed Coco Tasso Media uh, to perform here in-house in the past. And the program was so great. We definitely uh, welcome them with open arms to join us again for this year's um, Latino Celebration Program, um, where a little bit differently, we're not bringing them in-house, but we're bringing them to your house, right? <laughs> um, even better, a program you could attend in your pajamas, eating your cereal this morning. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, I had to come into work, so I didn't get to wear my pajamas, but it's okay. <laughs> Next time it'll be a pajama party. <laughs> so um, without further ado, I definitely want to welcome Dania Ramos, Michael Aquino, and Jenica Carmona, three members of the creative team who make Time Storm, a time travel adventure series about 12-year-old twins from Newark. They're joining us today to present a virtual listening party of a couple of episodes on the theme of Latinx civil rights movements in the US. Um, so they'll also be taking questions afterwards and comments, um, please place them in the chat or the Q&A. If you're on Facebook, please post some comments on the Facebook and I'll make sure that we get that um, to, to the discussion. So at this point, I am gonna go ahead and hand it over, hand our program over to Michael and Dania. Welcome and thank you. Thank hey, you so thank much, Jacinia. It's so amazing to be here. And we love hearing about all the programs that you have going on at the North Public Library. Absolutely. So we're gonna share our screen. All right, all right, and 
Okay, so hello and welcome. We are excited to be spending some time with you today for this Time Storm virtual listening event Ooh. as part of the North Public Library's 2020 Latino celebration. Now, if, yeah, if you aren't familiar with Time Storm, it's a time travel audio drama podcast for kids and families. Now, you might be wondering what is an audio drama podcast? All right, now think of it as a television show for your ears. Saludos. Eh, estamos muy emocionados pasar tiempo con ustedes hoy para este evento. Eh, hoy vamos a tener el privilegio de escuchar un episodio de Time Storm como parte de la celebración latino 2020 de la Biblioteca Pública de Newark. Time Storm es un podcast dramático de estilo viaje en el tiempo para niños y familias. ¿Qué es un audio podcast? Piénsalo como si fuera televisión para tus orejas. All right. My name is Dania Ramos, and I am the head writer and co-producer of Time Storm. And I'm Michael Aquino, and I am the audio engineer sound designer, composer, and a co-producer for Time Storm. And we are joined today by Jenica Carmona, who Ooh. plays Clara Ventura on the show. Mami. Mami. <laughs> <laughs> Gracias. Um, como han dicho, mi nombre es Jenica Carmona y soy actriz, y yo hago el papel de Clara, la mamá, <laughs> en el elenco de Time Storm. Dania Ramos es la escritora y coproductora de la serie, y Michael Aquino es el ingeniero y diseñador de sonido, compositor de música y coproductor. So, oh, I'm just gonna go back up here. Um, so Michael and I produce Time Storm through our independent media company. We just heard the name Cocotazo Media. We are based in Bloomfield, New Jersey. And Time Storm follows Alexa and Betty Ventura, twins from Newark, New Jersey, as they travel in time to witness, find, and remember Puerto Rico's true history. Dania y Michael producen Time Storm a través de su compañía de entretenimiento independiente Cocotazo Media en Bloomfield, New Jersey. Time Storm sigue la historia de Alexa y Benny Ventura, gemelos de Newark, quienes viajan en el tiempo para presenciar, encontrar y recordar la verdadera historia de Puerto Rico. Now, before we listen to the podcast, we'd like to share a bit about why we created Time Storm. Now, Dania and I were both born and raised in New Jersey, and we grew up visiting family in Puerto Rico. On the left is a picture of me opening up a Christmas present in my family's apartment in Union City. And then in the center is a picture of me with my mother and my brother on a float in the Puerto Rican Day Parade in Newark many, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and the other picture is me with my father and my brother in Puerto Rico. So as you can see, both of our backgrounds made us passionate to tell this story about stateside Puerto Rican kids connecting to the history and culture of the island. Antes de escuchar el podcast, queríamos compartir un poco sobre la motivación de los productores para crear a Time Storm. Dania y Michael nacieron y se criaron en Nueva Jersey y crecieron visitando a su familia en Puerto Rico. A la izquierda hay una foto de Michael abriendo un regalo de Navidad en el apartamento de su familia en Union City. Y en el centro hay una foto de Dania con su madre y con su madre y su hermano en una carroza para el desfile puertorriqueño en Newark. Y a la derecha hay una foto de Dania con su padre y hermano en Puerto Rico. Así que sus orígenes los inspiraron a contar esta historia sobre niños boricuas en los Estados Unidos que quieren crear una conexión con la historia y la cultura de la isla. All right, now we're going to start off with a few clips from the first three episodes of the series to set up the timeline. So you'll see a brief clips, you'll hear brief clips on that. After that, you'll hear two episodes from season one. 
La Maestra and Torn. They fit the theme of the celebration Latinx civil rights in the US. A reminder that this is a story being told through audio. So you'll be hearing the story, not seeing it. If an audience member is hard of hearing, you can visit the link that's at the bottom of the image for a transcript, okay? So we'll also have a link to full credits for both episodes. We hope you enjoy the story and we'll see you in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Vamos a empezar con unos clips de audio de los primeros tres episodios de la serie para preparar la historia. Después, vas a escuchar dos episodios de la primera temporada, La Maestra y Torn, que embraza el tema de esta celebración, los derechos civiles de los latinos en los Estados Unidos. Como recordatorio, esta historia se dice a través de audio, así que lo vas a escuchar, no lo vas a ver. Si alguien aquí tiene problemas de audición, puedes visitar el enlace debajo de la imagen para una transcripción y también puedes encontrar en este enlace los créditos para ambos episodios. Esperamos que lo disfruten. Nos vemos en 30 minutos. Okay. Here we go. Enjoy. Enjoy. Twins, 12 years old. Kids, the mission isn't a game. And it's a mission that you can't meet alone, Lieutenant Mendez. You need help. Besides, these aren't just any children. They are family. It's your turn to load the dishwasher, Benny. I want to finish reading this comic book. Well, you'd probably like this one, Alexa. The main character is Puerto Rican like us. Let me see. Take back time. American soldier Lieutenant Horacio Mendez is fighting a war on a foreign shore when he's pulled through an interdimensional portal into a time storm. I don't do interdimensional portals. What just happened? Where are we? It worked! Oh, oh perdón. You're probably confused, but, but there's no need to be frightened. Oh, I can't believe you're here. Oh, twins, Benito and Alexa Ventura, tremendous. D do we know you? Oh, my name is Horacio. Somos primos. Cousins? Oh, yeah, right. You're asking us to travel in time and change history. Not change. The mission is to witness, find, and remember history. Too many moments and people from our culture have been overlooked, lost, forgotten. Your parents and generations before them were all born in Puerto Rico. Yeah, but we never lived there. Our ancestors came not just from the Caribbean, but from Africa and Europe as well. All this is in our blood, part of our identity, wherever we are. I'll stick to New Jersey 2017, thanks. You can witness pivotal moments. Find the people who blaze our culture's path. Here, take this. A barometer made of bronze. See the labels along the edge? Very dry, fair, change, rain, stormy. When a time portal opens, another zone appears to complete the circle. There it is. T E M P. Tempest. This is what time sounds like. The windshield turns into a screen? It's like a private movie theater. Bueno, I don't control the transmission. Who does? Atabe. I told you not to call me that. That's not my name. I don't require a name. I simply am. I exist outside of the physical realm. Whoa! I wish it was that easy to get dressed for school. The clothing the Time Storm provides for you holds the knowledge you'll need for your journey. The language and customs of the time and place you visit. Your quests will be to meet certain people and witness certain moments, and then retrieve artifacts that will help preserve that history. Your quest. Retrieve a plea for equality from San Juan, Puerto Rico in 1838. Witness, find, remember. The hidden past seeks its 
dawn Showing us that we all belong Horacio, Alexa, and Fanny Take back time, find history in the time storm Witness Find Remember Humidity. Uh, where do you think we are? San Juan, 1838. I meant the building. Hello? Hi. Are you a new student? Yes, I am. D- so am I. But not at this school. Uh, of course not, because boys and girls don't attend school together. That's right. That's just how life works around here. Are you new in town? Yes, this is all so new. No need to be nervous. Celestina Cordero is most welcoming. Some say she's the best teacher in San Juan. For girls, anyway. No one can match her brother, Rafael. I used to be his student. Rafael Cordero? I assume you are headed to the school for boys. Now that you're done chaperoning your sister. Yes. I see you are safe. Now I can leave you and go to school. Thank you, dear brother, for, you know... Chaperoning me. I'll be passing the boys' school on Luna Street on my way to the seminary. If you want to travel with... That'd be excellent. I'm Benito. I'm Alexandra. Roman. Un placer. A A pleasure. pleasure. To la maestra's classroom. She awaits my arrival. I run errands for her on Friday mornings. Oh, you can follow me in, Alexandra. Right now? Bueno, class has already started. As you can hear. I'll be back for you at the end of the school day, hermana. (laughs) If you'll excuse us, Roman. Hermanito, how about a hug? Really? I don't like us splitting up in the 19th century. Not like we have a choice. Here, put the barometer in your purse thingy. Keep an eye out for anything that could be a plea for equality. You too. Be careful out there, hermanito. Enjoy your lessons, hermana. Taxonomy rank. Ready? Begin. The, the tree of life, kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, species. Good. Now pair up and list five single-celled organisms on your slates. Bienvenidos. Hola, Doña Celestina. This is Alexandra. A new mind to cultivate. A pleasure to meet you, Maestra Cordero. Girls, please welcome Alexandra to our class. Thanks. Why don't you sit by Marina and Patricia? You can share a slate with them. Roman, today's errand is special. Let's speak at my desk. After you. Hi. Hello. Hi. I think I'm sharing this bench with you. You'll have to put your satchel underneath. Hardly any room, as you can see. Oh, that's fine. I'll just sit right here on the end. We need to write five single cell organisms. Do you want to write them? Sure. Thank you. Uh... Why so confused? Have you never seen a slate before? Have you never seen chalk? <laughs> Roman, please see this correspondence makes its way to the newspaper office. It will be at La Gaceta within a quarter of an hour. I'm ever grateful for your help. Buenos dias. Adios, Doña Celestina. Careful! Look what you've done! Sorry, I didn't mean for it to... There's not enough chalk to go around. Is this the first time chalk has fallen in this room? No, Maestra Cordero. Well then, it's hardly anything to remark on. Please resume your writing. Do you run a lot of errands for Celestina Cordero? Well, only on Fridays, when my lessons at the seminary start later in the morning. How lucky am I to go from Rafael Cordero's classroom to El Seminario Conciliar de San Ildefonso. Wow. You really love school. Back in Ponce, my family was as poor as they come. But then, we moved to the capital when my parents heard how Don Rafael was changing lives in his classroom. (laughs) A free black man teaching children. The queen should outlaw it at once. I'm grateful to have learned from Rafael Cordero 
he showed me that education is the way to justice and freedom. You learned about freedom from a black man? <laughs> que porqueria. What is that in your hand? I'm delivering it to La Gaceta. Give it here. It's not mine to give. Now let's see who sent you on this little errand. Dear editor, I request the following announcement is printed in the next issue of La Gaceta as follows. I ask the island government, under the rule of the Spanish crown, to fulfill my request for supplies for the San Juan School for Girls. I have made similar appeals in private letters to the governor and the council of San Juan. Since my personal pleas remain unanswered, I now ask in this public forum. My students work hard. I work hard. It's unfair that being born female prevents us from being acknowledged for our efforts. I seek the same allocation of supplies offered to the school for boys on Luna Street. Please show my girls equal respect. They deserve it. Sincerely, Celestina Cordero, educator, San Juan Public School for Girls. A plea for equality. The only thing more ridiculous than a free black man educating boys is a free black woman educating girls. How delusional must this woman be to think La Gaceta would publish such a desperate notice? <laughs> Here's what I think of it. No, it's important. Can't you understand that? <laughs> you think you're fit to judge such things? It wasn't right to throw this notice to the ground like that. Ay, por favor. A little dirt and a few wrinkles won't stop us from delivering it to La Gaceta. You can't deliver what is not in your possession. I'll take this to the governor, so he can see how close a lowly spinster con woman came to mocking him in print. Celestina Cordero is brilliant. <laughs> I suggest you leave. We like to keep the streets clear of porqueria. <laughs> I can't believe him. He doesn't have a right to do that, does he? Some civil guards think they can do whatever they want, that their class and European blood makes them superior. Celestina's only asking for what's fair. If that officer goes to the governor and paints Celestina as a con woman, this plea could backfire on her. You think they'd shut her school down? I don't know. How I wish I could just run up to that officer and... No, I can't risk it. Certainly not with you in my charge. I can handle plenty. Oh, see? Getting arrested before arriving at your first day of school? Arrested? For what? Bueno, sometimes they don't need a reason. Come on, we'll tell Rafael what's happened. Ah, he had it! The artifact was right in Benny's hand! The quest was never going to be that easy. You know where the civil guard's headed with that artifact. Y ahora mira, Alexa and Benny are, are separated and stuck a at school. The twins can handle being in Celestina and Rafael's classrooms. A quest isn't simply about retrieving an object from a space and time. It is about who they meet and what they experience along the way. Oh, so now the artifacts aren't important? You've always made such a big deal about them, los artefactos. But if it's all about the experience, then why bother finding them? You humans need your artifacts. Something to guide you on the journey. A reason why. Are you saying that the artifacts are meaningless? That, that they've traveled all that way for a piece of paper? You tell me. What is the plea for equality worth to Celestina and those girls? What is El Fortín San Juan de la Cruz known for? Go ahead, Marina. It's the smallest of the five forts in the capital. Precisely. See, Patricia? And it was built underwater on purpose, so you needed a boat to get there. Excellent. And last but not least, La Fortaleza was originally built as a fort, but what distinction does it hold now? Alexandra, do you know? She hasn't said a word since she sat down. 
Hasn't put that broken piece of chalk to the slate even once. It's the executive mansion, home of the governor of Puerto Rico. Everyone knows that. Easiest question to answer. It's also known for, uh... See, si, Alexandra? Uh, all the international leaders that have stayed there, including kings, queens, and U.S. presidents. <laughs> Niñas! American presidents? <laughs> Can you imagine? George Washington slept here. <laughs> Not George Washington, the Ken... Oh, never mind. Forget it. Stop this laughing. Ahora mismo. A vibrant imagination is an amazing thing to possess. And that's exactly what it takes to envision a future where an island governor hosts a foreign president in La Fortaleza. Time for lunch. What's wrong, Miss America? Nothing. As in nothing inside of that satchel of yours? <laughs> Alexandra, come to my desk, please. Maestra? We all forget our lunch sometimes. Have some of my bread. Please, take it. Our stomachs must be fed along with our minds. Thank you, Maestra. Here we are. Rafael Cordero School. How I miss Luna Street. Roman, you've arrived during free art practice. It was always my favorite. Don Rafael, I'd like to introduce you to Benito, a new student. I ran into him while stopping by your sister's school. It's an honor to be in your class, Maestro Cordero. Pleasure is mine, Benito. Roman, have you delivered Celestina's request for supplies to La Gaceta? A civil guard stopped us on the street and confiscated the notice before we made it to La Gaceta. He even said... He was going to tell the governor that she was trying to humiliate him. Did you catch the guard's name? No. He was average height, dark hair, mustache, wore that uniform. His laugh. What about it? it sounded like a demon. Peña y Ruiz. You know him? Thinks he's untouchable because he guards the governor's residence during the afternoon shift. I was afraid to risk being arrested on the spot but I wanted so badly to go after him and snatch the Nastina's notice right from his pocket. It is best for you to leave this alone, Roman. I'll let my sister know what has happened. Ooh, I can't stand witnessing injustice and doing nothing about it. Don't lose that righteousness, but understand this is Celestina's fight. Stick to your studies for now. Está bien. I'll head to the seminary at once. Much luck to you, Benito. Thank you for your help. My pleasure. I'm sure we'll cross paths soon enough. Hasta la próxima. Adios, Roman. Bueno, Benito, join any art group you'd like. It's music you're calling. Painting with little Francisco. Or perhaps drama with Alejandrito, a little prince of theater. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great. Some achieve greatness. And some have greatness. Thrust upon them. See you on Monday, girls. Hasta la próxima, Maestra Cordero. See you Monday, Miss America. Hopefully not. What did you say? See you Monday. Sometimes it's hard being in a new town. Yeah, you could say that. Where's your family from? Ponce. A long way. You'll do fine in my classroom. You've got quite an imagination. <laughs> That's what everyone says about my brother. Loves stories and all that. I'm glad he's encouraged for it. But it's important for others to credit your strengths as well. Oh, I totally get credit. Totally? What I mean is, my other teachers let me know that I'm smart. I didn't realize they had a girls' school in Ponce. It, it was more like homeschooling. Family members who taught me and my brother. I'm glad they understand the importance of educating young women. Many still don't, even here in the capital. I'm fighting hard for my girls to get an equal education. Just today, I sent Roman with a request for supplies. A plea for equality. I intend for it to be published in La Gaceta. In the past, I've appealed to the governor directly, but my words have fallen on deaf ears. Here's hoping it makes its way to print. In La Gaceta? Uh, I should start heading home. It's a bit of a trek. You aren't walking alone, are you? Mm-mm. My brother Benito should be here any moment. I didn't catch your last name. Ventura. The mason's daughter? No, my father's a pilot. Ah, a boat captain. Oh, right. He pilots boats down here at sea level. A great profession on an island. See you Monday. I won't be... 
My mother might need my help around the house in the coming weeks. I'm not sure when I'll be back. Hasta la próxima. Whenever it may be. Maestra? Yes? Thank you for the warm welcome into your classroom and for everything you're fighting for. Even if you don't ever get the government to treat us equally, I'm sure generations of girls will benefit from your efforts. There you go predicting the future again. I'll make a prediction of my own. I think you'll do amazing things, Alexandra Ventura. Buena suerte. Thank you. You tell me, what is the plea for equality worth to Celestina and those girls? Everything. And in the original timeline, it's been lost forever. There's only one way to get it back. They must get that artifact. Benny? I'm, I'm so, so glad, glad to see you. You wouldn't believe what happened today. I know what, what the artifact today. is. Me too. So is that like I said Not that? quite. We should probably... Can we find somewhere to... Yeah. yeah. Oh, rain feels good. The building looks so different. Smaller and like an actual fort. It won't be renovated to look more like a house until sometime in the next decade. That's him there, Benya and Reese. Mm, pretty average looking if you ask me. Look, the paper's still there in his front pocket. Celestina's plea. How are we supposed to get it? Uh, I have an idea. I think I can grab it. You can't just walk up to him. You're a girl in 1838. That can work to our advantage. Stay hidden just around this corner. Here, Ooh. hold on to my old-timey bag. Fine, but just... Be careful. <coughs> Help me! Oh, whoa! Who's there? Oh, whoa? Ay, 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 ay! <laughs> what is the meaning of this? This is no place for a girl. Leave at once. I feel so faint. I need your help, Papa. <laughs> oh, I am not your father. Ay, the rain, the rain. <sighs> Ave Maria Purissima. Papa, it's getting so... Dark. Eh? She's got it. <clears throat> Thank you for your help. I feel much better now. Uh, 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 uh. Not so fast. I'll take this back. <laughs> Let go of her! Uh. Get it, Benny! This paper isn't yours! You again? <gasps> it's torn in two! Give me the other half! You dare give an order to a civil card officer? <laughs> <laughs> Let him go! <laughs> Scamper off, little girl. Would you look at this? The entrance to La Fortaleza is unguarded. Perhaps I'll pay the governor a visit. Who's there? Roman! Keep still, silly boy. Uh, got the other half! Grab the satchel, Alexa! Be niños malditos. Uh. <laughs> Juan Benito! Corre, Alexa! Complete the errand! Come on! Let's go! I'll have you arrested, young man! Perhaps the governor would frown upon one of his civil guards arresting the top student in the seminary. Uh, what is your name? Roman Pardoriotti de Castro. You have no right to take private property, and you have no right to kick me from the streets of my San Juan. <laughs> Amazing was Roman back there. He came out of nowhere. Benya's no match for him. <laughs> that laugh. <laughs> I told you. His uniform smelled like it's never been washed. The rain. The rain. Papa, it's getting so dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shame the paper is torn. Here, put both pieces in your purse thing. Good idea. We don't want it to get any more destroyed before we get to La Gaceta. La Gaceta? Roman said to complete the errand. He doesn't know what we know. You should have seen La Maestra's face. She's just trying to get what the girls deserve. We can't go back without this artifact. But delivering this notice seems like such a minor thing. La Gaceta never published this notice. It has to stay that way. Celestina cares so much about her students. This is her life's work. We're not supposed to deliver this to La Gaceta. We can't mess around with history. You're right, Benito. Uh, can't I just tell him? I can use the barometer. Not yet. So we're going to let them alter history and create another timeline when I have the ability to speak to them? They haven't altered history yet. 
You need to trust your cousins. They need to trust themselves. They've got this. Fine. Alexa. What? See? We're doing the right thing. Tempest. Here we go. Whoa! Hola, hermana. Another week of lessons completed. Rafael, how did your students fare today? Tremendous. And yours? They managed well enough. My class continues to grow. I had to assign three girls to share a slate today. I hope this helps. I don't want to take slates away from your boys. It's rare that all my slates are in use at one time. I appreciate your generosity, but I prefer to claim what's rightfully ours. Let us see what my public announcement in La Gaceta yields. I'm afraid the notice was intercepted. What's this? I spoke with Roman. That arrogant Peña y Ruiz swiped the paper from him before he reached La Gaceta. They want to silence me. To make it seem like I don't exist. No, no, it's worse than that. They want to erase the fact that there are girls in here every day thinking and speaking their minds. Smart girls who can grow up and be better teachers than I could ever dream of being. I'm sorry, Celestina. I thought maybe when Queen Maria Cristina put a halt to the slave trade to Puerto Rico, that more freedoms would follow. But here we are, three years later, and I can't offer my students what they need. Is that paper? Why are the sheets torn? I tore each sheet into four smaller pieces. It will last longer this way. I, Celestina, please accept these slates. I'm repaying a debt. You owe me nothing. I'm a teacher because of you. You changed my life when you started that first school here in San Juan. How lucky I've been to have a big sister to lead the way. You would have started one soon enough. After all, you are a cordero. Ah, but I can never match your perseverance. Standing up to the city council to get accreditation after years of rejection. And the rejection continues. I'm so tired, Rafael. Then rest your mind for the new week. Your students need you. Thank you for the slates. The girls will benefit from them. Debt repaid? <laughs> you don't owe me, El Manito. Ay, Celestina. So many of us do. Kind of crazy. Lots of running around. You could see us in the windshield? Not the whole time. We check in to make sure you're safe. How long were we there? You know, in Earth time. You completed the quest in just under eight hours. Here you go. The play for equality torn apart. Artifact cloud emerge. What in the world? It's like one of those mobiles for a baby's crib. Only, uh, uh, for junk? Artefactos. This is the artifact cloud. You can see objects up there already. An instrument? An old book? Ooh, a mask. Whoa! Why is everything changing in size like that? In the cloud, matter changes form according to the cloud's rhythm. But where did these other artifacts come from? A question for another time. Artifact attained. Whoa, okay, there it goes. Artifact cloud, retreat. Que pasa, Alexa? The notice should have been published instead of floating around in a a weird looking cloud. If you had delivered it to La Gaceta, it would have created another timeline. So, we just hold on to what happened, knowing that we could have done more? You saw Celestina teach. We found and retrieved the plea for equality. What does bringing back a muddy, torn piece of paper from 1838 do exactly? A question for another time. Wait a minute. I thought time was too human for you. It's just a saying, Benito Ventura. Now, before the time portal closes. <sighs> 21st century clothes are so comfortable. You'll be back for your next quest before you...
Annie? Have you seen your sister? Welcome. We are back. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue. We just got a little bit more, and then we'll have some questions. Okay, excellent. So you just heard two episodes from Time Storm Season 1. And you can actually hear all of the episodes right now from the first two seasons for free. We're going to let you know how to do that in a moment. <laughs> Acabas de escuchar dos episodios de la primera temporada de Time Storm. Puedes escuchar todos los episodios de las primeras dos temporadas ahora completamente gratis y te diremos cómo. So, uh, what's great about podcasts is that you can listen anytime, anywhere, and most podcasts are free, like Time Storm. So, you can listen to podcasts on your cell phone, on your tablet, or using uh, by using a listening app. But there are some specific examples we want to share with you here. Um, we have Apple Podcasts with that uh, purple icon. And then if you are using an Android, you can also listen with Google Podcasts, that app. Um, you can also listen to Timestorm on Spotify, Pandora, or our website, timestormseries.com or tracks.fm. And a, a reminder for parents that podcasts offer an entertaining, uh, entertaining content that's screen free. Very important right now. <laughs> <laughs> Lo bonito de los podcasts es que los puedes escuchar a cualquier tiempo y cualquier lugar. Y la mayoría de los podcasts son gratis, como por ejemplo, Timestorm. Aquí unos ejemplos. Eh, puedes escuchar a los podcasts en tu celular o en una tableta usando una aplicación de escuchar. Eh, si usas Apple, puedes marcar el icono violeta de Apple Podcasts. Si usas Android, marca el icono blanco de Google Podcasts. También puedes escuchar a Timestorm en Spotify o Pandora o en la página de web timestormseries.com o tracks.fm. Y finalmente, un recordatorio a los padres que los podcasts ofrecen una opción diferente para contenido sin usar pantalla. All right, so Timestorm is a member of Trax, and Trax is a network of free original podcasts for ages 9 to 13. We're also a part of Kids Listen, and Kids Listen is an organization that advocates for high quality audio content for children. Kids Listen also has a free app featuring member podcasts aimed at children in preschool through middle grades. So in both of these tracks and, and Kids Listen are excellent places to find more podcasts for kids. Timestorm es miembro de la red de Tracks, una red de podcasts originales de alta calidad para niños de 9 a 13 años. Esta red de podcasts pueden ser escuchadas totalmente gratis. También es miembro de Kids Listen, que es una organización que aboga por contenido de audio para niños, quienes han creado una aplicación de celular gratis con podcasts dirigidos para niños entre las edades de preescolar hasta los 13 años. Ambos lugares son fantásticos para encontrar más podcasts para niños. And before we switch off, I just want to point out that we have members of our cast in those pictures. Um, and the cast, of course, as you just heard, are amazing. Danica's part of it. And is again, a reminder, we're going to show you that uh, link. If you want to see the full cast and credits, everyone who's uh, working to make this podcast, you can visit that, um, cocotazomedia.com slash time storm you can see the the um the link the, the link right there um okay so sorry Jenica, go ahead. no no it's okay and uh, si quieren saber más información sobre la serie puedes uh, visitar uh, el página de web cocotazomedia.com y, y puedes um, hacer clic en los enlaces que ves en la pantalla ahora all right excellent so we are happy now to take any questions that there might be. Si alguna pregunta, quien, que alguien quiere preguntar, estamos disponibles. 
Um, so, so thank you guys. And I'm going to start out with the first one. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to just real quick, I know you gave us uh, the podcast uh, options where we can hear it, but um, for people like me who are not as very, very uh, tech savvy as I would like to be, when I go to this podcast, let's say I open Pandora, something that I use a lot, what am I typing in to get to Time Storm series? Sure. You, there should be a search option. You literally can type the word Time Storm, one word, and it should show up with our logo yeah, this, that you see. This one, this logo, one. This logo. Yeah. <laughs> you click on that, um, and most apps will give you an option to subscribe, or you could just listen one episode at a time. Um, the easiest way, if you're saying, oh, I don't know about an app right now, the easiest thing to do is go to timestormseries.com and all the episodes are right there. It's right in your web browser. Yeah, and there's a little button that says episodes. Uh, click on it and then all of the episodes will be there. And you can start from one and go all the way through. We have 35 episodes right now. So not all of them are full episodes. Some of them are bonus things, but you could do that. Wonderful. I'm, I'm definitely going to log on because I have to hear the rest of the, this episode one. Yes. Um, or I, I definitely have to do that. And I'm going to do it with my son. I have an eight year old, so he's right on. Um, loving. I've just got him into um, audio books, uh, something that we would do driving around. And then the pandemic hit and we weren't driving around as often. So, so this is a great way to pick that up because he really did um, enjoy sort of listening um and this this is amazing um i i'd like to know uh, i'm going to start out with uh, the first one is where'd you get the idea of the twins is this <laughs> you know, do you guys uh, have you guys related to twins or <laughs> where where'd that idea come up from well i personally have a, um, some twins in uh my family actually you heard a pair of them um, Alyssa Bracken and Amanda Bracken um, played the young students who were in episode in Torn. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry, in La Maestra. So that was episode four. Um, but uh, the idea of using twins for the podcast came before they were part of the cast. So mm -hmm. this has been this storyline has been in development for quite a quite a few years. I think initially it was 2012, and I had um, come up with the concept for a, a competition for a stage play um, that had that was about New Jersey history. So I had come up with the idea of the twins at that point for this completely other different thing. Um, and so I knew that um, I wanted to use um, twins because I wanted to have a boy and a girl because I wanted to make sure that um, all children were gonna be invested in the storyline. Um, and so we were, we were really excited about being able to offer that. Wonderful. So now follow up to that is uh, how about the history of Puerto Rico? You know, I had a program um, earlier this week where uh, both the keynote speaker and myself shared how we didn't learn, you know, we born and raised here in here in the States, right, or mainland, and we didn't learn about Puerto Rico history until we got to college and had to pay for that history. Right. Um, so I'm wondering, uh, where did you guys get this? You obviously in the program um, have a knowledge of the history of Puerto Rico. Where did you guys learn that? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was research, um, you know, uh, book research, various types of research. Um, I think, you know, for me personally, um, growing up, I, I was exposed to a lot of like the art and music and the culture of Puerto Rico um, through my parents. Just they had art around the house. And, you know, of course, you're listening to music um, during like holidays and stuff like that. But um, and then also um, when I visited um, Puerto Rico in my youth, um, my, my parents would take me to various different cultural things on the island itself. Um, so that was my kind of background. In that. I don't know if either of you want to share. <laughs> um, Jenica, if you want to share anything about your... About my history and experience or... Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, you know, um, I was Puerto, I am Puerto Rican and I was, you know, raised by parents who definitely, um, 
I guess, cultured that sense of our history and like really um, prioritized us learning. So I did have some, you know, at least culturally, not necessarily historically, but in terms of like um, holiday traditions and customs, speaking Spanish at home, um, visiting Puerto Rico often and maintaining that connection to the family. Um, and, you know, when I got older and went to college and everything, um, I did have to, you know, like you said, just any pay to learn, you know, but, um, you know, the great thing is that you learn about all these resources um, that are out there and available, um, you know, to learn about Puerto Rican history. Um, I was fascinated about what you were saying. I'm curious to visit um, New York uh, Public Library to learn more. And there's also Centro in the city that has a lot of stuff of Puerto Rican history. Um, so I, I think it's, um, it's really wonderful. And I, I kind of feel excited, you know, that stuff like you know, Danny and Michael's um, time storm is being done so that, you know, younger kids um, growing up will have this, you know, it won't be necessarily that they have to wait till they get to college to learn about it, you know, um, and I really hope that stuff like this, you know, gets in the schools and that, you know, it'll be, you know, um, available to them as they grow up so that they don't have to wait till they get older to learn about their history. And Danya, um, but Jenica brings up a great point. We do, one of our missions with TimeStorm is to make sure that it does um, make its way into schools. And we do have resource guides, um, as we said, available for teachers and parents and, and uh, even for people teach, doing homeschooling at home. You know, you can use the, you can use TimeStorm as a way to learn about uh, Puerto Rican history. So you don't have to wait till you get older and pay for it. And, and I'm going to pop in and just say that Centro, um, Jenica mentioned Centro, that's a really great source. Um, they have a lot of great material um, online. I know they also have um, physical archives as well. Um, and they have something, I think it's called the Puerto Rican Cultural Ambassador Program that you can go through and they have actual, um, I think it's through their YouTube channel lessons that you can go through and learn a lot about um, Puerto Rican culture and history there. So mm -hmm. that's a great resource as well. Yeah. Yeah, on that note, I want to I want to also, you know, put a plug in for the Centro. <laughs> this is actually where we where I went to train um, on conducting a survey of the Puerto Rican communities in New Jersey. So when we established the HRIC, um, you know, the Hispanic Research and Information Center, this was is the first of its kind in the state of New Jersey. Um, so we modeled the archive after uh, Centro, where I went to train to learn about the archives and how they've uh, managed and created that. By the time this was established, uh, Centro had, and their archives had already been around for a good 25 to 30 years. Um, so it, it is a great resource and actually a model for what we do here in the archive. And Jenny got for sure, you know, we can definitely bring you around um, and let you <laughs> share, you know, the, definitely the many resources that we have on the Puerto Rican communities in New Jersey. So where That's Central it. documents the, uh, the Puerto Rican diaspora around the states with a focus in New York, um, we do the same thing, but for, well, focus in New Jersey. So fantastic. Um, whenever, whenever you want, you know, we could definitely give a tour of that. Um, Great. So I, I also wanted to, and then, and then we have a digital archive as well. So so uh, I, didn't, I don't think I mentioned that earlier. It's digital.mpl.org, where we were able to digitize some of our collections um, in the archive. So that's that's available. And, and we don't need to wait for coronavirus to be over. To visit that. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, I, I do have a question from uh, the audience from somewhere on Facebook says, how do you finance this wonderful project? And are you a nonprofit? Yeah, it's a great question. So um, initially, we started this um, doing this for free. You know, we we were lucky to have a lot of friends who, like Jenica, who are performers and and who were good friends who volunteered their time. Uh, but in um, the in December of 2019, we were accepted into a program called the Google Podcasts Creator Program. And it was an accelerator program specifically for people starting podcasts. And um, we, through that, we were able to get some funding, mentorship, resources, help to be able to produce it. So once we did get that, we were able to then begin happily to pay, w w which we wanted to, to pay our actors and to be able to um, put more resources into the show. Um, and that experience led to us being in tracks as well and they also pro provide some help 
uh, with us, uh, for us to be able to produce the show. And we're very uh, grateful to have that opportunity to be able to to um, retain those resources and then be able to to use it to produce the show. So it is it it does take uh, some time and some and some money for us, but not everybody. And this is uh, you know a talk for another uh, uh, thing. When producing a podcast, you know we encourage people to do it, and you don't necessarily need a lot of money to be able to do it. And that's the great thing about creating a podcast is that it's really it's it's really affordable uh, to be able to do. And you can grow with the process right. um, as you grow it, whatever the production, if it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, and specifically, whether we're a nonprofit or um, uh, we're, we're actually, Kokotasu Media is an LLC. So that's how uh, <laughs> we are organized and we are a very young LLC. <laughs> yeah. that. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the question. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So um, I, I did have a question about the language it's in. I, I, it's in English, right. um, and I and I really really appreciate that that it's in English. Even when we time travel into Puerto Rico when they were speaking Spanish, um, because uh, people such as myself and definitely a community of nine to thirteen year olds um, here, you know, definitely on the states in the mainland, the primary language is English, right? Right. Um, so, but I but I my question is, um, it it is available in Spanish? And if not, do you have plans to, to maybe have it translated in the future? We love this question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do, we do, we do. And I'll let Donia um, Yeah, so it's not currently available in Spanish, um, but we um, are, I guess would say we're in development of what that will look like, a Spanish language version. Um, it's something that we want to see happen. Uh, we want to make sure we know how we're going to make that happen before we start really um, putting out specific things out there into the public. But we've been saying that it's a matter of when, not if. Yeah, so stay, stay so tuned. We'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, and when it does, you know, of course, um, we'd be happy to host it here at the library for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, on that note, right, I, I also wanted to know a little bit about the Colderos, right? Mm -hmm. Are they actual characters? And yes, uh, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> tell me about right, the Colderos. Yeah, so, so briefly, um, so Celestina and, and Rafael Cordero, they were brothers and sisters. And they were born, uh, Celestina was born in, in Puerto Rico in, in 1787. And her uh, father was a formerly enslaved person. Um, and Celestina started a school for girls in 1820 in Puerto Rico. So uh, as you could probably imagine, um, 1820, uh, it was probably very hard for anybody to start a school, let alone somebody who was a formerly enslaved person. Oh, so, she wasn't. She wasn't. Her oh, father sorry. Was. Her father was. Um, so even even that, it just was really really difficult. And um, her brother, uh, do you want to talk a little bit about? Her brother is actually pretty well known in Puerto Rico. Um, he has a street named after him in On San Juan, and I believe a few different buildings. Um, and his former school is on, I believe, the registry, like a historic registry. You can see the building. I believe it has a plaque. Um, there. So uh, that was the reason we wanted to focus on Celestina was because her her brother who, you know, got all this attention and was beloved, um, uh, you know, he got that, that um, adoration and that recognition where Celestina, who did a lot of the same work um, at, for girls, did wasn't a, as recognized. Um, so you know, um, she's there's starting to be more articles. What's great is I, I'm starting. We're starting to see more articles come out. I think Centro has been putting out some information about her, um, in particular during um, African American Heritage Month. Um, and so we we would love to see more, like what, how much more information um, can we see about this amazing woman who did so much for um, girls' education? Um, and we, we really, truly, like that's part of why we wrote, I wrote these, these two episodes and we wanted to feature them is um, to show that inequality at that time um, through the lens of the twins, particularly for this episode through Alexa, who is, you know, sitting there, um, 
but you know say understanding how unfair it is how how um unequal it is so yeah and the, and just really quickly this is the 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 overall arc of time storm in general is we're highlighting these people in history that don't get um the the visibility uh and we're that's what we're so excited about so celestine is one story and there's a bunch of other stories in season one and then in season two as well we have stories of, of people from Puerto Rican history that get overlooked and don't uh, get as much visibility. So please listen. <laughs> I I certainly um, and I'm going to push everyone else to listen as well. Um, yeah. And I don't I don't think it'll take a hard push. I really appreciate <laughs> you know definitely um, when I heard uh, Celestina Coldero, it was vaguely a familiar. Year, but I definitely heard of Rafael Coldero, right? right so, right. so I, yeah, I definitely appreciate that that you took the time out to recognize, right, the lesser known historical figures. Um, it's a great thing. I see here, um, Jenica recommended. There's a great kids book I can recommend called Caras Lindas. One side is in English and the other side is in Spanish, which is a big plus, thank you. <laughs> it highlights Hi. several historical figures in Puerto Rican history, including Rafael Coldero. So um, I am going to look in our catalog to see if we have that, make sure to feature that in our- There's a lot of women in there too. You guys are talking about highlighting the, um, the less, uh, the more often overlooked figures in Puerto Rican history. And like that one has a lot of the women, you know, yeah. so I really, it's really nice. cool. Yeah. Nice. Wonderful. I will look that up. Thank you. So um, do we have any other comments, questions? I don't see anything in the Q&A. Um, and if not seeing anything, I want to thank you once again. You guys were wonderful. Thank you. I'm definitely looking forward to listening to the entire episodes. <laughs> um, and, and it's something I'm definitely going to put on my uh, awesome program I see from the <laughs> from the chat. Thank you. Something Thank I'm definitely you. gonna favorite in my Pandora. So um, any last words, comments? Uh, let me just say uh, real quick, I, I you guys had mentioned it, but you know, this year's um, Latino celebration at the library is on Latinx civil rights movements in the US. Um, and I really appreciate and love how you highlight it, right? Exactly that. We're talking about a plea for equality, you know, we're <laughs> I, I love it. Um, and it's so very fitting, right? Not just to our celebration. Our celebration is fitting because of the times and what's going on, you know, locally, across the country, across the world with, you know, protests um, on, on civil rights. So, so very timing, suiting. I love it. Thank you guys. Thank um, you. And I will, you've already showed us, you know, where to find you, um, but definitely any, any last comments uh, you'd like to share with us. Um, well, I'll just say thank you. Yeah. We love every all the programming that the NARC Public Library um, does. And I just want to say that the character of Clara Ventura is a librarian <laughs> at she the is. North End, End Branch. So um, <laughs> we make a point of really highlighting NARC as a community yep. in the, uh, and this is a past episode, but in the present day episodes, we really do try to highlight NARC as a city. Um, and, and so we hope that you, you tune in for that too. Yep both fictional places in Newark that Donnie has created, but also real places like Brant, they, there's a festival in Branch Rock Park, you know, so they tend to really kind of, we, we like to highlight the beautiful city that is Newark, so. so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you guys. And thank you, Jenica, for, for the translations. I love that we'll be able to share this program in Spanish as well. Um, so thank you guys again. Thank and I'm looking forward uh, for sure to more episodes and future collaborations. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. You. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>